Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to yet another exciting episode of the Vinnie Eastwood Show. This one's a very exciting episode, mind you, because we have, I don't know, me and my mate uh, Mikhail were really, uh, really getting into our music one night. Uh, that's a, a euphemism for something. And we thought about, you know, what would be the, like, the coolest interview, you know, something that we haven't done before, something nobody hadn't been done. And... I had these two listeners, maybe even more actually, telling me that I needed to get Max Egan back on. And another couple of listeners who listened to my Jordan Maxwell interview for a, a while back and they're saying, we need to get Jordan on. And I thought, and I was like, boom, it came into my head. You get Jordan Maxwell and Max Egan on the Vinnie Eastwood show for two hours, bro. That sounded really choice. We were like, oh my God, I can't wait to listen to that. And now, you get to listen to it. We have Jordan Maxwell and Max Egan on the Vinnie Eastwood Show. Jordan Maxwell's website is jordanmaxwellshow.com, not to be confused with jordanmaxwell.com, and uh, Max Egan's show is thecrowhouse.com. Welcome, gentlemen. Well, thank you for having me on again. Also, um, Jordan has a bad connection. Uh, this is mostly because all of his equipment... Research materials, clothing, etc. His life's work, all his belongings, burnt to the ground this morning. And there is a uh, short video on the YouTube channel, the uh, Vinnie Eastwood Show dot com has a link to the YouTube page where you can uh, uh, hear uh, Jordan talk about that and explain uh, what we need uh, from you, uh, the listeners, as well. And, and namesake, um, probably around about five grand to just get him back on his feet in terms of being able to record uh, shows again with a, a little computer. He's got people that have good, you know, connections and whatnot. They can get it all cheapy, cheapy. So go to jordanmaxwellshow.com and donate today. And also we'd like to introduce uh, Max Egan. Hey, Vinny. Thanks for having me on again, brother. Nice yeah. to be on with Jordan. Yeah, it is. It is. Now, um, prefacing this conversation, uh, I was talking to uh, Jordan before the show. Um, he's been threatened recently. So he's, get, he's, get, he's You've got it coming at you from all angles, don't you, mate? He's been threatened recently <laughs> not to talk about government conspiracy. So we're not going to talk about that today. Um, in fact, we've done shockingly large amounts of content. Jordan's been doing it for 54 years. I'm tired of it. Max, are you, t are you a little bit tired of it, do you know, to a degree? To a degree. I mean, it's still going on, but, yeah, it, it, does, become, it does become tiresome. It becomes kind of tedious, right? So, like, <laughs> you know, talking about your own enslavement and extermination, you know, I was like, oh, 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 you're bored now. No. <laughs> but, oh. but, yeah, we want to talk about spirituality. And uh, as we were saying just, just off air before, I um, had an interview just before today saying that uh, spirituality and religion are mutually exclusive. Jordan, I'd like to hear your thoughts on that. Absolutely. There's no doubt that uh, the, it's been proven now around the world that um, the world is filled with religions. People are praying to their gods, all the different gods of the Jews, the Islamic people, the Christians. And the more people are praying around the world to their God, the worse our world is becoming day by day. The more corrupt, the more evil. <clears throat> so there's no doubt in my mind that um, religion is the problem. Uh, what he said, ladies and gentlemen, is it robs you of your spirituality and you don't need something external in order to guide your spirituality. You have that guiding light within you. Is that more or less it? That's it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Max, you, you also had a comment to make about this too, didn't you? Well, that's exactly what it does. I mean, religion has hijacked spirituality, and it's turned it into something very negative. And even when you look at what happens in the situation of a church, it's actually a very negative ritual that's going on in a church. You've got people that are going there because they're in a state of fear for a start. They're in, in a state, you know, they're, they're scared that they're going to go to hell if they don't go to pray to this God. Um, they go to a building... And they, they are in a state of fear and they're, they're praying for their own self-preservation and they're doing what, what is essentially negative affirmations. They're praying for peace and they're praying for love. So essentially they're acknowledging that there is no peace and there is no love and they're doing it in a building designed to channel energy and they're doing it in a state of fear. So the whole thing is negative right from the very, very um, onset. 
Now you look at a, a, a traditional prayer, the way a, a Native American or a, a, a shaman would pray, they would put themselves in the energetic state where their prayer had already been answered. If you wanted peace in the world, you would put yourself in a state where you are feeling the peace in the world. You are feeling the love in the world. If you wanted rain, you're going to put yourself in the energetic state where you're standing in the rain. And you call that reality in because reality will mirror back to you the emotional state that you're in. And churches and religion are designed to put you in a negative emotional state and get you praying for self-preservation, essentially, and, and doing negative affirmations the whole time you're there. So they're very, very insidious places. I think that anybody who asks other people to believe what they're saying on their word and doesn't encourage them to research further into what they're telling them and doesn't encourage them to question them uh, is inherently corrupt or corruptible at the very least. Well, yeah, of course, of course. I mean, everything should be uh, you know, open to your own interpretation. You need to investigate everything everybody says. I even say that with my shows. Don't believe me. Go and investigate for yourself. All I'm offering you is my perspective. And that's what religion's done. It's offered you their perspective. But it's put the, the fear of God into you so that if you don't take my perspective on as reality, then you're going to go and burn in hell. It puts you in this state of fear. You know, it's mind control. The whole thing's about mind control. And it's, it's very disempowering. It's designed to shift you away from your own spiritual power and, and cause you to place that power in an external being. And it's it's all it's all a fiction. It's all an illusion. It's very very negative. Well, stuff. they do the opposite of the sales pitch, Max. In, in a lot of cases, they say we bring you love, we bring you peace, we bring you contentment, and then once you become an employee of the church, we bring you small boys and we charge large amounts of money for them. Yeah, well, that's another side to it, isn't it? You know, that's that's the inner circle. No pun intended. And the, the horrific nature of psychopathy, I think, really kind of uh, uh, spells this out to a large degree because, after all, psychopaths crave power and control. There's a couple of institutions that ha have a lot of power and control that basically influence society to a large extent, and religion is certainly one of them. Well, yeah, absolutely. You know, the relig but you know, the, there's a lot of stuff that goes on with religion. I mean, a lot of the uh, the psychopaths hide there, and there's there's a lot of you know really really insidious stuff that, that goes on in churches and in convents and you know, these very very negative places. But I mean, just look at the the, the fruit that religion has borne. Really, if you look at the world, you look at the world in the last few hundred years. I mean, so many wars have been fought in the name of religion. So many people have died in the name of religion. All these religions essentially preach love and peace. Uh, but they all preach um, religious superiority as well. You know, love, love the guys from the other faith. Don't judge them badly, but understand that if you belong to this faith, then only you are going to go to heaven, so only you are special. Even though we, we, we can't judge these people bad, you're special. So it's all, it's all based on supremacism, and every religion does this. And, you know, they're, they're taught to you know, eye for an eye, all this, this violent stuff. Let's go and force ourselves on other people. It's all it's all ridiculous, and all the redeemer complex that goes with Christianity as well. I mean, it's okay for you to go and kill the others because you're just doing God's will, and Jesus died for your sins anyway, so it's okay. Yeah, so Bill Hicks criticised Christianity one time uh, in a small southern town. A couple of guys came up to him and said, "Hey, buddy, come here. We're Christians. We didn't like what you said." He said, "Then forgive me." Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's that's the way it should be, but it, it it isn't that way. I mean, look look at the fruit that it's born. It, it's brought endless bloodshed to the world, endless war to the world. So you know, you you've really got to examine what this stuff is and where it's going, where it comes from. I mean, look what the Vatican's done. Look, look where it all comes from. Look at the fruit that it's born. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but that said, I have seen individual practitioners who don't belong to a, a massive uh, hierarchy evilarchy, which is a mixture of uh, evil, evil, the monarchy, and malarkey, it, who go out and do this, their own thing their own way, um, and incidentally, they don't get too much favour from the community. Saw a couple of videos for Christian pastors who were feeding the homeless. They collect donations from their parish, they load up a truck full of food and water bottles, 
and they go uh, under bridges and, and, and things of this nature to feed the homeless and give them water and spare blankets if they need it. These are people who have just like been kicked out of their homes from foreclosures, from uh, you know banks to scams and, th- and things of this nature. And then what does the local municipality do? They say feeding the homeless is illegal and they try and charge the church. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, this is what, uh, you know, I mean, a lot of people probably join these religious institutions because they are searching for spirituality. They are searching for some deeper meaning to their lives, and that's what the churches pretend to offer them. Well, that is what they do offer them. It is just in what they deliver. Is it a rose by any other name, though? I mean, I I was just thinking about this. It doesn't matter what uh, kind of emblem you wear, whether you're wearing a... uh, uh, a peace button or born to kill like on uh, a full metal jacket or, or a crucifix as long as you're actually just not a douchebag and you're actually doing good things for good people well yeah i mean that's a good part of it isn't it? i mean that that's what you should do if you're involved in any religion you should ask yourself well what would what would jesus do what would that character that this whole faith is based on do in this situation wouldn't he do the right thing maybe you know, that's what's lacking in, and if you believe well, if you believe in such things, maybe you don't even believe he existed. Maybe you do, but whatever. You know, the, the, the actual basis of the doctrine is good. It always is. It always, all these religions have to base their doctrine on something good as its foundation because otherwise it wouldn't attract people to begin with. But then they wrap it up in all this other stuff that isn't part of the doctrine. I mean, look at Christianity. It's got very little to do with the teachings of Christ. It's all about this doctrine that's been laid down by the church, which is essentially a corporate control mechanism. That's what it is. I mean, it's got nothing to do. It's, it's everything that Christ was speaking out against, you know, when he overturned the tables of the money changers and all this sort of stuff. He, Which he was, was incidentally the only time that he went to church. <laughs> exactly. He was a rebel. He didn't want anything to do with the church. He didn't want anything to do with organized religion. He didn't want anything to do with any of that stuff. That's what he was trying to say. And then people started doing what he, what he said, so they thought, well, gra- shit, we better grab this and wrap it up in a doctrine and feed it to the people as a control mechanism. And that's what they've done. It's got nothing to do with the teachings of Christ, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's like in, in, in the movies, for example, when they do historical films based upon real events and, and stuff like that, what they do is they have what they call composite characters. We have three diff- completely different people who did totally different stuff, who they just basically mold into being this one character, usually well, the often, central protagonist. Well, I've often, I've often speculated that that could well be what Christ was. You know, I mean, I know I may upset a lot of people by saying that, but but you've got to be objective. You've got to look at all of this stuff. Yeah, it's like, bro, I wasn't there. I can't be sure. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. I mean, I wasn't there. I I can't make the call. But I can look at the lives of certain people, such as um, there was a a Titus Flavius was one character, Roman Emperor Titus Flavius, and there's another guy called Apollonius of Tyana. And then there's this guy, the rebel priest out of the Dead Sea Scrolls. And if you get those three people and you wrap them all together, you come up with a very, very tidy Jesus Christ. Now, I think that's an interesting concept as well because he doesn't seem to have any history outside the Bible. There just, just doesn't seem to be any history for this guy in, in any of the uh, contemporary history books at the time. So, um, I don't know, even, even a lot of the disciples, you know, like John and all this sort of stuff, I mean, and Simon, I can't find any history for a lot of these people in contemporary history books. So... I just wonder. I wonder, you know. I mean, it's an interesting It's an interesting story, and we'll never know. We can only speculate. But uh, like I said, when I look at the fruit of religion, I don't think the fruit that it's born has been anything that we, we would uh, see as beneficial to, to mankind. Look at the damage that it's done to indigenous cultures around the planet. Look at what it did to shamanistic traditions all throughout the world, and millions and millions of people that died throughout the Inquisition. And I mean, it's been shocking what it's done. And, uh, you know, it's it's... it's it's, it's like all moved. great powers. Some scumbag gets a hold of it and uses it against people when it's supposed to be used to help people. Well, it's, it's disconnected people from themselves. It's disconnected them from their own spirituality, from their own sexuality, from, from everything that is beneficial to themselves and everything that we may be here to learn about ourselves. Religion takes care of all of that for you and wraps you up in cotton wool and says all you've got to do is do, the, do what it says on this list and you're going to be fine. Sounds kind of like aside. fragmented yeah. mind, mind control to me. You know, where you split the mind into certain personalities and then use trigger words. Jesus. Yeah, well, it is. It's done. It's done terrible things to human consciousness. It really has, and I, I can't see it as anything beneficial. I think that. Um, well, you, you well, let, let's 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 take it take it in um, 
in its whole holistic context, shall we? Let's say, for example, I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe in the power of Jesus Christ. I can't be- I, I'm not a hundred percent sure because I wasn't there if it, if it was a real dude or something. But there've been times just just the belief in the word alone has given strength to my legs that wouldn't ordinarily ordinary be there because I was collapsed in a heap. And I think that's because when you have nothing left, you call out to a higher power and hope that, and hope like hell that it gives you the strength to continue, more or less. It's a crisis thing. And uh, this is what happens in um, uh, POW camps. The atheists die first. Because <laughs> when they're trapped with no hope of rescue, they're really trapped with no hope of rescue. The hardcore Christians won't. Why? Because they're never alone in that cell by themselves, and they're never without hope of salvation. And that's just the belief in and of itself, not even taking anything else into account. That's the power of human belief. I, that's, that's why I'm starting to wonder, does it really matter actually what you believe in, or does it truly matter what your actions are? Well, I think, you know, it's, it's a matter of belief in a, in a higher power. Um, I mean, I believe in a higher power. I don't believe in Christianity at all. I don't believe in any religion, but I'm not an atheist. I believe in God, just not in what people would, would see as a, as a normal concept of God. I don't believe it's some guy with a big beard sitting up there looking down and watching everything I do with a list of things that he doesn't want me to do. Which is ironic, because that's what you look like. <laughs> yeah, well, but I don't think it's any of that. I mean, I think... Yeah, if, if you listen to some of the shows that I've done, like the energetic universe and some of the stuff that I talked about in my film, The Awakening, I mean, I think that it's an energetic universe and I think the energy that all is created from is its self-conscious. This is what I believe. And this is through experiences that I've had myself through meditation and certain connections that I've made and I've just connected to this energetic field at times. And so for me... It has relevance, and, and this is what I've attempted to share with people. So I believe there's a higher power, and I believe that everything happens for a reason, and I'm able to accept any position that I'm in mm-hmm. through my life. It's all part of the ride. There's nothing that can really happen that can affect me. It may affect my body, but it won't affect me because my consciousness is eternal. This is just a, a vessel that it's using to experience this reality for uh, a little while. you know. So you know, I, I have particular views that, that get me through most situations, you know, and they're very, very spiritual, highly spiritual views, and I feel very connected to what you would probably call God, but it isn't anything that you could define by any religious sense. Yeah. It's, you know what I mean? So, I'd say the closest thing I could I could uh, discover to God is, uh, well, there's two, there's two visions of it. One, he kind of looks like me, kind of sounds like me, but he's not me. There's no freaking way he's me because he's perfect in every way, you know, like the Mary Poppins version of Vinnie Eastwood, practically perfect in every way, and and like totally knows everything, and it's just just basically is a real pain in the ass because it's that something sounds that you just could, like you, Vinnie. It that sounds, sounds like, just like you, mate. It's totally I, perfect, but a real pain in the ass. Now look, you are perfect, Vinnie. You're perfect <laughs> well, yeah, being let me, Vinnie let me, Eastwood. Let me finish. Let me finish. Because because I'm not perfect. I'm flawed. Um, I'm just perfect at this impression of Vinnie Eastwood, which is current, which is currently flawed and being built and, and very 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 slowly put together like a giant pyramid which will eventually enslave my freedom and 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 and, and myself anyway uh is basically better than me in every way right not perfect but but better than me in absolutely everything in a, in, a, in a point where i could never hope to achieve it all right and uh that's my higher self and the reason why uh i can never achieve it is because that's the whole point is because you never achieve perfection there's no, there's no point in actually trying to say, I will obtain it someday. It's actually just something to strive for and never achieve to constantly remind you that you're still human and you're not a god so that you don't run away with yourself. Well, yeah, but you're, you still are perfect, Vinny. You're perfect at being you with all of your flaws because the flaws that you have give you the unique perspective of, of reality that you have. Oh, yeah, but, no but one, I'm no not one, talking about my flaws. No, I'm me, talking no, about my no ceiling. One, no, but no one can have that perspective that you've got better than you. No That's one can true. see the world better than you can from your eyes. So you're perfect at being you, and being you is what you came here to be. Obviously, because that's who you are. You're here to gain the experience of reality from the perspective of Vinnie Eastwood with all of your flaws and imperfections, because reality needs to understand reality from that perspective. 
It needs to understand it from every perspective. Yeah, that's so what see, holism is about. Well, you're like a you're like a thought in the mind of God. This is what everybody is. You see. So, and, and, and what, what you're here is to, to make a difference. You, you've got to have the choice to go wrong. You've got to have, evil's got to be in the world. You've got to have the choice to, to do the ultimate evil because otherwise how do you have that choice not to do that? How do you have the choice to go right if you don't have the choice to go wrong? You've got to have that choice because otherwise it, it, it's, there's no reason for it. There's no reason for the experience. It's what you do with the time. It's what your legacy is that you leave behind, what you, you strive for the perfection. But what is perfection? Perfection is simply being all that you can be with the tools that you've been given for the experience and, and, and experiencing life to the fullest of your potential and leaving a legacy behind for others and, and improving reality by your presence in it. And you've got every tool you need to do that so you are perfect. And that's what it's about, you know, like th this is what it's about for everybody. We, we've been taken away from all that. We've been given this idea that it's supposed to be what it says in this book, but it's not. It's not about that at all. It's about you. It's about your unique expression of creation and what you do with that time. And everybody is perfect. They're all perfect at being themselves. It's just that we're trained to, to measure ourselves by parameters that are not our own. And so we never, we never view ourselves as the perfect expressions of creation that we are. You know, but we are. We are all perfect, really. Everybody is perfect. It's just that we're, we're taught that perfection isn't us. It's something else. It's something that we have to strive to be when we already are. We are all everything we could ever want to be. And we have the potential to be everything we could be. If we simply understood how reality works and simply understood what we are. And this is the danger of religion. This is what religion has more than anything taken away from people. And that's why we've got a world that's in the state that it's in today. It's almost a direct result of the mind fuck that is religion. You know? I, I completely agree. And my other thought of what God might be <clears throat> is the latent psionic energy within that uh, is within all living things. And, and mind you, I think science has discovered that matter itself is conscious. It, cha it changes it when, you, when you observe it. Of so, course it is. Yeah. Everything is conscious because everything's made of energy and the energy itself is conscious, Finney. Yeah. There is no matter. The measurement problem has shown that. There is no matter. It's, it's an illusion. The whole lot's an illusion. Yeah. Well, that's what they, they found in the Large Hadron Collider. They're like $8 billion, four countries. What, what, what's, the, what's the whole idea of this? Well, to find out where we all come from. But don't we already know kind of, kind of thing? No, 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 but we want to find how the universe came, uh, came well, from. You want, well, to, is, you want to find the God particle. Really? The well, God particle, is, eh? What's the potential risk of this? Well, we could potentially create a black hole and kill everybody on Earth and probably the entire uh, uh, our, our half of the galaxy, but we're going to do it anyway. So they do this experiment, they crash two particles together at virtual light speed, and they, they explode, and they do create a new kind of matter that disappeared instantly and had absolutely no practical use, and they called it doesn't matter. Ah, oh, lovely. But look, Vinny, this is the ultimate in left brain um, activity, you see, that they're looking for the God particle, they're looking for the particle that contains consciousness. They want to find out how they can how they can get chemicals and rocks and minerals and mix it all together and create life. Now, we can already create life through procreation, the, the sexes. I see the a lot of people who are alive. Or dumb, I, I see a lot of people alive walking around who are dumb as a rock already, bro. I'm not sure if they're going to achieve this, their well, goals, you know. <laughs> but, they're, but they're trying to find a particle. They believe it all comes from particle. They don't understand the energy itself is conscious. You know, there is no matter. You know, look at the measurement problem. You know, a scientist goes to measure an atom – and he, he can't measure the atom because the electrons are, are, are infinite. They exist everywhere at once. It isn't until he goes to measure the atom that they coalesce to create the atom. The electrons make the conscious choice to become that atom so he can measure the atom, right? So Newtonian physics breaks down right at that point. It breaks down at the singularity. So they've got this whole ridiculous scientific system they've based on Newtonian physics, which breaks down at the singularity. They can't even explain what an atom is, and yet they're going to create a hadron collider and, and spend billions of dollars bombarding particles together looking for the God particle. Well, they know that the physics doesn't work anyway because they can't even understand what an atom is. They can't even explain an atom. And they know the measurement problem's real. I mean, these people are insane. Yeah. They just can't admit that the energy itself is conscious. It's, there's only actually one of us here.
It's just different frequencies of consciousness inhabiting different vessels to experience consciousness from that unique perspective, which is perfect and unique to that frequency. Yeah. That is what's going on here. You know, and, and they've just lost the plot and they're destroying the planet trying to figure out where life comes from. It, it's, it's, it's madness. It's completely and utterly insane, you know. And, and we used to know this. This is where all the shaman issue traditions, this is where they all start from. They start from the perspective that we're connected to everything. And we've tried to destroy everything, and scientists are just trying to figure out now, gee, we might be connected to everything, you know. I mean, it's absurd. We've done everything backwards. And that, that's why the world's in the state that it's in, you know. I mean, the Hadron Collider is, is a, a prime example of left brain stupidity, how, how far we are willing to go and just how stupid these scientists are. When all these guys know about the measurement problem, they know it breaks down at the singularity, they know the physics is flawed, why the hell? But they know that the people who have money to fund their crazy schemes <laughs> don't know that. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what it is, mate, but they're insane. They're completely insane. I mean, the Hadron Collider proves that they're insane, you know? Well, you know, never underestimate a man's ability to play mind games with himself and win. We'll be right back. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Vinnie Eastwood Show. This is a uh, a, a proxy meeting uh, with uh, Max Egan and Jordan Maxwell, who has a uh, an awful connection, so he's mostly just sitting in um, and listening to this one, and we'll, and we'll probably uh, redo this again later on down the track uh, when he's got his uh, equipment. By the way, jordanmaxwellshow.com, not jordanmaxwell.com. JordanMaxwellShow.com is where you can go to donate to help uh, replace Jordan's belongings, which just burnt to the ground in a warehouse this morning, the day that they were supposed to be shipped to his home. You can't make this stuff up, folks. You know, uh, I believe in synchronicity. I don't really believe in coincidence. <laughs> you know, the two are, the two are very uh, mutually exclusive, you know, like religion and spirituality. We do have Max Egan with a great connection, on the other hand. Uh, welcome back, brother. Now, I wanted to make a comment to you and I want to sort of uh, pass on an observation my bandmate Mike uh, 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 made. He said he listened to a, a, a presentation you did or, or, or an interview you were where, where, you, where you were. He'd, he'd never heard, he'd heard you swear before in his life. And, and, and he was like amazed to, to hear it. It's like you were really worked up or something. Do you, do you recall? Because I, I don't think I've seen it. Um, look, no, I don't. It might have been on the round table discussion with Kate of Guy a couple of weeks ago. I think. I, oh, I think that might have been it. Yeah. Yeah, well, that was a kind of a very open round table sort of a thing. So yeah, I dropped a few there. <laughs> I didn't have to use the radio voice for that one, you know. So. Yeah. Well, you know, it happens sometimes, and and uh, I, I get to the point where ah. Uh, I don't know about you, but the vast amount of my cussing happens when technical issues happen, you know, behind the scenes when nobody's watching, when nobody's listening. It's kind of like uh, 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 masturbation or voting for Reagan, you know. Everybody does it, but they, they try to keep it away from everybody else, and they deny that they do it anyway. Well, I swear like a trooper. People mm. probably wouldn't think that, but I do. I keep it very calm for the radio because I, I've got to speak across uh, American talk radio, and it actually goes out on normal radio, on FM radio, AM radio. So, you know, I've got to keep it down because they have certain rules in America. If I want the show to go on air, then I have to keep the cussing down. But in real life, I have no problem with swearing. I'm not offended by swearing. I don't think there's any words that you can say or any sound you can make with your mouth is so evil it's going to send you to hell. You know, I think all of this stuff is uh, an illusion. Well, how do you explain Justin Bieber? I don't know how anyone would explain Justin Bieber. What, what, what's going on with Justin Bieber? I, I, I mean, talking I, about like a sound that t takes you straight to hell, you know. Okay, no worries. Well, I'm, I'm not actually familiar with Justin Bieber. I've actually, I couldn't even tell you what one of his songs is. So Yeah, yeah. Well, no, nobody could. And uh, I remember um, Thomas Sheridan made a comment. You remember we, uh, back in the day there was the news about uh, uh, Angelina Jolie. She had her breast cut off to prevent herself from getting breast cancer. The very next day, Thomas Sheridan uh, puts up a post saying he's having his ears amputated just in case Justin Bieber puts out another album. Yeah, well, that sounds like about the same mentality that uh, Angelina Jolie employed. How, how terrible was that? I mean, 
I've got the gene which may lead to cancer, so I'm going to have my breasts removed. This is absolute insanity. You know, and, and what I was promoting as well with the with the kids, more programming for the kids, of course. Yeah, That's here's my idol. That. She's so pretty, and she looks really nice with her fake ones now. I don't know, Angelina Jolie. I mean, she she she's a strange looking woman. Yeah, she's got lips like a fish tank. I don't know whether she's uh, pretty. I don't know whether you'd call her that, but um, yeah. Jordan, Jordan, I heard you in the background there. Are you uh, are you vocal? Oh, not quite. <laughs> right, never mind. Now, the other element here I was, I was wanting to uh, talk about in terms of uh, pop culture. And, uh, you know, culture, people don't really pick the word cult out of there, you know. Uh, I, I think you really should, because if it's part of the culture, there's probably a cult involved somewhere. A cult of some kind, whether it be a cult of personality or, or, or a pedophile cult or something nasty like that. This whole system is a conditioning system, right? That it's it's like um, there's an old saying in medieval times: when collecting firewood, you were able to collect it either by hook or by crook. Meaning, if it was a dangling dry branch or something like that off of a tree, and you could hook it down, you could you could keep that firewood, or by crook, meaning you could steal it. And so, what's happening now, I think, is, is society is being fashioned to a point where you get brainwashed by hook or by crook. Either uh, you one of the low hanging fruit and you and you're quite easy to manipulate at the time, or you are quite resistant and you'll get directly fracked over at some point. Oh, absolutely! And pop culture is specifically designed to do this. I mean, just the iPhone culture that the whole you know you've got to have the latest exploding shoes and the latest you know iPad and the latest this and the latest that, or you're a lesser person. There's a, a lot of this goes on, and it's all programming. The whole lot of it. Uh, it's all designed to break down the family unit, to, to separate people from, from themselves, to separate people from each other. Even when you look at the whole iPad, um, iPhone culture, the texting culture, it's, uh, it's, it's created a, a smaller world in many regards because we're now able to communicate with people across vast distances. But it's also um, taken people away from, from hands-on communication. People have a great you know, deal of difficulty making eye contact with each other anymore. A lot of young kids, they, they will sit across the room and text each other rather than actually talk to each other. So they're, they're losing their, their essential life skills. There was one school that was even suggesting they, they should stop um, teaching handwriting to students because they can just um, type now on their, on their iPads and on their, their computers. They don't need to learn how to write. So they're digitizing everything, you know, to putting all of our knowledge in a digital reality separating us more and more from real reality, you know. And that's what pop culture is designed to do. It's very dangerous, very insidious. It's all programming. Um, you know, it's all indoctrination and programming, all leading towards transhumanism, all designed to break down the family unit, separate people from themselves, separate them from each other, get them locked into this virtual reality where they can be more easily controlled. That's what it's all about. It's, that's the direction it's going. Uh, Jordan, Jordan, can you hear us? Are you there? I thought I heard him shuffling around. This is, okay, he's going to be the silent, silent partner, which is going to channel the ghost of Jordan Maxwell. Well, I think that's what I was doing. No, I can't do it. I can't do it. Okay. Um, I was thinking about this. All right. If you talk, think about pop culture, let's think about influences. How much of an influence is it going to put on you? And uh, here's the question. If you're going to be thinking about how much pop culture influences people, how many different sources have you got? Okay, are you talking to people who are tattoo artists, you know, and, and figure out what kind of tattoos people are getting, for example? I have, and guess what they're telling me? You've got people coming in off the street with a frickin' image that they got off Google Images, and they say, I want that one. You go, well, well hold on a second, bro, that's not going to look good for your entire life, you know, that, that's kind of a bit, you know, current, and it's not something that's timeless. You're going to regret that in, in, like, maybe a couple of years. And, uh, no, 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 I want that one. Are you sure? I could design you something that's actually more your style and personalized and not mass produced and totally mind numbingly brainwashed and stupid and a, and a big mistake in your life? No, no, no. I want that one. <laughs> you go. 
can't make this stuff up, bro. And, and it's like, just just that one example shows you, just shows you the exact effect of mass mind control. There is no thought, all right? It's it's like remote control. Well, yeah, yeah, that, that's what people do. That's what people do. Um, no thought. You've you've got to have what everybody else has got. You've got to have the latest exploding shoes. It's it's what it's all about, you know. And it's it's all done through pop culture. It's all programming. It's been interesting actually. When I went over to the third world countries, I saw the pop culture there. It's like twenty years behind where we are at the moment, and you can see how they're conditioning people to become where where we are now. You know, it's, it's interesting to see. See all the stuff they don't sell. All the as the pop culture changes, all the old products they don't sell. They ship all this stuff up to the third world and then they promote that, that pop culture there so they can get rid of all their old stock, you know. That's interesting. Oh, it's sort of like uh, the dregs, right? Uh, there's a saying that I have is that there's no creativity left in Hollywood. Everything's just reintroduced, remanufactured, repackaged and retitled ideas. Right. Well, yeah, it's all dregs, but it's all also there's been a process that's been used. It, it's it's been a gradual process that's been used to disconnect us from nature, disconnect us from ourselves, disconnect us from the earth, and they they do this as they go into third world countries. You, they no, you're probably right, Max. Imagine if people uh, went suddenly from having no uh, running water and and no electricity to having a smartphone in a year. Okay. Yeah, you know, it wouldn't it wouldn't work. You've got to you've got to lead them through the Transformers stuff so they get used to the machine culture and all. See, like you go to South America now, Transformers are huge, right? This is stuff that we were doing twenty, thirty years ago because it gets people into that machine culture. You know what I mean? Well, then again, Transformers are just releasing a new. Um but line of movies and things like that and a resurgence of oh, the yeah, toy no, but, community. No, but but it's, all, it, it's all the, like, uh, even with the Batman and stuff, but you go there, the, the, the Batman stuff in South America is the old yellow label and the old oh, Batman really? in the grey suit and all that sort of stuff, you know? So it's all, that you've got to lead them towards this, this new modern version of stuff. It's a gradual process of disconnection that takes place over a couple of generations. And that, that's why they do it. It's a program. You know, it's, it's all programming. It's all done in a specific way for a specific reason because that's how you disconnect them. Like you say, you could you could go into a tribal culture now and give them a smartphone and a MacBook and an iPad and, and electricity and solar power and they would not know what to do with it. <clears throat> it wouldn't mean anything to them. Within within a month, they'd be back living in the jungle. So you've got to, you've got to gradually disconnect them through little trinkets along the way and gradually remould their their way of thinking over a couple of generations. And that, that's why it's been done that way. And well, to, I to think lead it's people more... down a machine path and down a, a transhumanist path, you've got to gradually introduce this machine culture into their minds. Because you know? left brain, is, is, it's very, very different to the way these native cultures live. These are very, very right brain, very earth-connected cultures. So it's, it's a process, you know. Mm, mm, mm. I mean, it would be quite interesting. Um, I, I'd like to use the Dune analogy, you know. Uh, they don't value gold or spice. They value water. Yeah. You know? And what happens is, I think, uh, cultural, what, what, what was it called? Social engineering. It's got a game plan, right? And I was just thinking about it as you were saying this, and, and this might be an important thought. Decades. The 70s is the uh, decade of uh, permissive activity, and you can tell that because somebody can tell you any story about anything wild and crazy they did in the 70s, and it's totally excusable because it was oh. the 70s. And then you had the bad fashion and the uh, and the sort of uh, uh, latent rebellious uh, stage uh, of the 80s with the Kurt Cobains and, and Nirvanas and, and uh, bad hair and, and uh, bad fashion and all of that kind of stuff. So it actually distorts people's idea of what, of, uh, what looking uh, attractive is. So you've distorted what they permit in terms of behavior. Then you've distorted what they like in terms of, of appearance. And then in the 90s, what else did they, what else did they uh, manage to distort? They managed to distort distort our connections with our communities all right this is when all the uh, uh telephones this is when the internet really started coming in and in the 2000s i see what has happened is a it's almost like you go away and you separate everybody out and then you bring in a big event to bring them back together right like 9 11 <clears throat> and then the rest of it 
After you've brought them all back together again, you need to bring them back together for the wrong reasons and then separate them further and further and further from each other. Not specifically stretching them further from each other because, as you say, we've got all this communication technology, but physically from each other. And, and, and make us learn, make us uh, react to digital communications, text messaging, as though it's real human interaction. The body, I think, reacts very, very differently when you've got a person in front of you that you can hug and the vibes that they put off and what have you than you do from a text message. And I think that connection with real people is what they so, what they sought to deprive us of. And, and uh, I think what's happening now is people have actually grown aware to that because we've gotten the technology to figure out that this, what this game plan is and how long and slow the social engineers have been playing it out. And now we're experiencing a resurgence and people going back the other way and making it more about connectivity and ironically using the technology that was brought, that was brought out to keep us apart to bring us back together again. Well, yeah, I mean, we've been played. I mean, people have really been played because, I mean, they, they disconnected everybody. They promised you all of this sort of stuff, and it, it turned into a huge schmozzle. And then people were just waiting for society to implode. So they promised you this big event like 2012. The world's going to change in 2012. So people are all distracted, not doing anything about it, waiting for the world to change. Another external source is going to come. You know, This is like another saviour. 2012 was almost like a religious experience for people waiting for this event to happen, you know. So, and then it didn't happen, so people are left running around going, "What was the big non-event? What was that all? They're all disillusioned and all sorts of stuff." So, yeah, there's all sorts of social engineering that happens, Vinny, all along the way. I had a 2012 party. We watched the movie 2012. And watched everybody get wiped out and stuff, drinking beer and smoking cigarettes. It was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and uh, I think that's actually the approach I take to, to most things. If somebody says, oh, something's going to happen at, at such and such a date, you know, whether that be gas prices, economic crash, blah, 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 blah. Whatever the hell the end of the world is, my instant reaction is, and my plausible uh, reaction is just to deny it straight up off offhand and go, no, it's not going to happen. There's no such thing as freaking doomsday. Now, if at one point I happen to be incorrect then it actually is doomsday. But here's the benefit. I didn't spend my freaking life worrying about it. <laughs> well, that's the thing. You know, people spend their lives worrying about it and they're, they're distracted. They're, they're thinking the world's going to change through, and through nothing that they have to participate in. You know, I don't have to do anything to fix the world because it's all going to change in 2012. All, everything's going to change. You know, we're going to have big, big geological changes, earth changes, all this stuff's going to happen. It's, an, it's a new religion. It's salvation coming from an external source. I don't have to do anything to address the government. I don't have to do anything to address the, the problems or anything to deal with my own lack of spiritual prowess because the world's going to change. You know, something's going to happen. A comet's going to come. Jesus is going to come. Someone's going to save things for me. I'm going to wake up one day and someone's going to go, look, everything's different now and you didn't have to do a damn thing. You know, that's what all of this stuff is designed to do. You know, don't do anything. It's all like all these people say disclosure's coming. Disclosure's coming. They're going to let you know about all the aliens. It's all happening. It's imminent. It's imminent. Don't rock the boat. It's all coming. You know, it's, it, don't do anything. Wait. Something's going to happen, which is going to change your reality for you. You don't have to participate. That's what all of it's about. It's all distraction, and it's all designed to lead people away from themselves. Mm. You know, and if, if we, if we were to be, if we absolutely disempowerment, if we were to pay attention to who and what we are, and, and and simply turn and face this system, in one day we could change things. If humanity would simply step up to the plate and step into the power that they've got, it's just that they've been trained to believe they don't have any, yeah. but they do. You know, it's the old learned helplessness thing. You know, if you. I don't know what this what this fish analogy is, you know, teach a man to fish, he'll feed his thing for a lifetime. Not if the frickin' Fukushima stuff makes all the fish radioactive, it don't. <laughs> well, <yeah. laughs> yeah, is that going on as well? Mate, we've got a lot of issues to deal with, Vinny, we really do. You know, and, and in fact, there's too many. And, and uh, I had a, um, a listener who's actually just kind of starting to wake up and, and that kind of thing. I just had a conversation with him on Skype. He, he, he was texting me on... on uh, on Facebook, and he sounded like in a real bad way. And I said, "Bro, what's your what's your Skype?" So I gave him a ring, 
And, uh, yeah, he's, he's not feeling too good about it, man. He's like, what can I do? How can I help, et cetera, et cetera. And I go, well, hold on a second, mate. You're going too fast. You're going too fast. First of all, is every single problem in the world your fault? No. So knowing that it's not all your fault, is it all your responsibility? No. What is your fault and what is your responsibility? Only what you do in your own life, son. Don't take responsibility for others if you haven't taken responsibility for yourself. And that way it relieves a hell of a lot of burden and uh, just replaces it with responsibility, which is what the burden should really ideally embody. Well, you know, we've got, to, we've got to be prepared to take this system on, but we've got to know who we are in order to do it. And that's the thing. You know, people, um, they, they want to get violent or angry or whatever with the system. And I, I suggest that people just ask the right questions in the right way, know who and what you are, and, and stand in your power. But you've got to have community to be able to do it. We need united communities. See, everything about this system is designed to keep us divided from each other, and that's the problem, you know? See, really, when you look at everything that we face... I've said this a million times on shows, you know, like you look at Fukushima, you look at the wars, the starvation, the homelessness, the money situation, religious division, everything that we've got on this planet, every problem that we face really ultimately becomes from legislation that's been enacted by governments. You know, we've got a disempowered population which has allowed these governments to just keep enacting legislation, which has allowed corporate corruption. It's allowed things like Fukushima to take place. It's allowed the coal seam gas mine to take place, all of this stuff. And all of this happens because we don't know who we are because we live in divided societies. You know, if we can rediscover ourselves and, and respect ourselves enough to respect the people around us and we stand up as one united community... We can hold our public trustees accountable. We can change the direction the ship of state is sailing in. It's all got to come down to respect. You know, and that, that comes down to inner work. This is why they've created religion to hijack your, your own spiritual prowess away from you. Same as Freemasonry. Well, yeah, it all, it all teaches you to, to give your power to something external. If you can change your, your perspective of who and what you are and respect yourself and see the perfection of yourself, like I said, you know, you're perfect at being Vinnie Eastwood. You're, you're perfect at being you. And once you realize that about yourself and you see that in others, then the barriers between you and these other people break down. You realize that we're all in this together. We're all simply, you know, having our different perspective. That That's what we're here for. You know, where's all the division? Where's it all come from? It's, it's a result of this hey, society. It's point. all fiction. That's a good it's point. It's all fiction. Yeah. It's all fiction. All of the division is fiction. It's all just there because we're measuring ourselves to external parameters. And once we've got this respect for each other, we could stand up and, and hold our public trustees accountable. In one day, we could change the direction this world's going in. So there's your solution right there. Respect yourself. That's it. Once you can do that, you know, because if you don't respect people around you, then it's because you don't respect yourself. You don't know yourself properly. That's the problem, you know. Yeah. And this is all from a loss of spirituality. A lot of it is, is because of religion that we're in this, this state, you know. So, I mean, to me, that's the solution, Vinny. The solution is for us to respect ourselves enough to respect our community because then we can change the world in a day. In the words of Ice Cube, you better oh. check yourself before you wreck yourself. Well, yeah, you know, you know, but I mean, people just can't see it. They can't see the forest for the trees. I mean, one thing Einstein said that was great was... Um, Two things are infinite, you know, the universe and human stupidity, though I'm not, I'm not sure about the former. Yeah, I, I think that's about right. And here's the other thing. I had an important thought the other day. I want to hear your thoughts on it, Max. This is um, <clears throat> compassion and love. Why don't people mention that when they talk about human nature? Why are they always talking about greed and war and scumbaggery when they, when they mention human nature? Because aren't they kind of equal part and parcel? Well, yeah, they are. Compassion is so important. I, I, I believe compassion to be the the fabric that makes up reality. If if you could if you could translate the energetic fabric of the universe into an emotion, it would be compassion. Because you know, a, 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 an object, uh, atoms must have compassion for each other to to stick together into into an object. They must have compassion and empathy for each other. You know, every, everything is, is based in compassion. For an object to even be a solid object, it must have compassion. Compassion is a fabric that, that binds reality together to me. That, that's, that's the feeling that I got one day from meditation, from, from just an experience I had. You know, that reminds me, ironically, of a church uh, putting a sign out the front that said, don't trust atoms, they make up everything. 
Yeah, they do. They do. They absolutely do. That's bad. That's a good one. But you know, um, yeah, com- compassion is, is extremely important, Vinny. It, it is. I mean, compassion is everything. Compassion is what binds reality together. Yeah. Well, see, I've been, I've been delving into like this kind of um, what's the real difference between a narcissist and a psychopath, right? Uh, you know, I mean, I've, I've acknowledged that I'm kind of like a, a, a benign narcissist, you know, like Muhammad Ali or Bruce Lee, you know, real talented, real freaking onto it, really want to help people. Uh, but at the end of the day, I'm, I'm a little bit selfish, you know, but, but I think my good things make up for my bad things all over it because I'm perfect, as you say. And uh, <laughs> I was just thinking, like, what are the parameters? What is it that psychopaths possess that I don't? Or, or rather, here's a better idea. What do I possess that a psychopath doesn't have? Because psychopaths yeah. don't have things that I don't. They've, I've got things that they don't. Like, I've got creativity. I've got mm-hmm. love. I've got compassion. Okay? You've got, you've got empathy. Mm-hmm. A, a psychopath doesn't have empathy. So even when you look at a psychopath, you, you can't... If, if you really want to be objective and, and really be responsible about it, I mean, you look at a psychopath, you can't even say that what they're doing is, is consciously evil sometimes because they, they don't have empathy. They have no concept of the pain and damage that they cause to people. Maybe they do. I don't know. Maybe they enjoy it. But, you know, if, if you don't have empathy, it isn't like, I mean, you, you don't feel um, empathy for a cow in a slaughterhouse. A, 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 someone doesn't feel empathy for these animals when they're killing them and slaughtering them. You don't feel empathy for, for ants that you're spraying in the garden. It's the same sort of thing. They just don't feel the same way as we do so are they being consciously evil it's a it's a it's an interesting uh perspective you know if you really want to be objective about it but they they if they're not able to feel empathy then how do they know what right and wrong is you know well i was thinking about just uh the other day that we inherently know what right and wrong is because there's a feeling Right, you know, like this is wrong, man. Well, we do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we could, it, it's because almost we have like, empathy because we have empathy. Yeah, yeah, and and that's basically the uh, the well thing. I mean, do you have a conscience or do you not? If you don't have a conscience, you will not instinctively know right from wrong. You'll know right from wrong, but it won't be because you feel it. It's because you've learned how people react to when you do certain things. Exactly. You find psychopaths have kind of two dimensional eyes, and they recognise each other. And, and they always, they're very charismatic and they, they rise to, to power. They, they always manage to rise to positions of power and they award power to psychopaths beneath them in the, in the food chain. This is why we've got this psychopathic system. We've got this psychopathic society. You know, cause, and this is a lot of the thing that the shamans used to do as well. This is why I believe the church went to so much trouble to wipe out shamanistic traditions because shamans used to weed out the psychopaths in the society. They used to recognize them and they'd make sure these people never got to positions of power. That's why the church went to such extraordinary efforts to wipe out shaman because it's a psychopathic system. And with, with the shaman, if, if they're in control of the, of the villages and in control of the cultures or at least observing the cultures or watching over them, then they make sure the psychopaths don't get to uh, positions of power. Mm. It's a big clue in that, I think. Yeah. Why, why the shaman have come out and they're trying to re-educate people back to their old ways, you know? Yeah, man. We'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen, Max Egan and the ghost of Jordan Maxwell. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, uh, to the final segment with uh, Max Egan and Jordan Maxwell. Uh, Max Egan's website is uh, thecrowhouse.com uh, and uh, Jordan's website is jordanmaxwellshow.com. I know you haven't been listening uh, and, and being able to uh, hear Jordan because his, um, his connection's real bad, but he can, he can hear us and, and going through uh, the conversation. We will, uh, of course, redo this over again uh, once Jordan gets his equipment and whatnot. And if you want to help out with that, just uh, bear in mind... Uh, all his belongings uh, just burnt to ground in, in, in a warehouse this morning, and he needs to be able to get back up on his feet. You know, just simple things like a closed computer and a microphone. You know, uh, and, and just just those those few things uh, that you that you need to uh, recover f- costs like five grand. You know, so please go to jordanmaxwellshow.com dot uh, com today and give very very generously as well the man's 74 years old and he's having to go through all of this kind of stuff that that's hard to deal with when you're when you're a young fella all right so this is what we're talking about when we talk about empathy and compassion for people max egan welcome back sir thanks for having me back Vinny. 
Now, can I ask you something? I haven't travelled much, and uh, you've travelled a lot recently. What's it like? You know, I mean, in terms of vibes, or, or how different is it to just, just your normal life? It's about as different as it can possibly get, isn't it? Well, you know, everywhere you go, really, I mean, there you are. I mean, everywhere is, is much the same as everywhere else in, in that respect. Everywhere is as, as good as the people that you know. And everywhere that I went, I found pockets of resistance all over the world. I found people that are awake. Maybe, maybe it's just because of what I do and they're the type of people that I attract. But everywhere I went, I found pockets of resistance all over the world. But I found that it's the same. I mean, they're trying to turn the world into everywhere else. You know, they turn everywhere into everywhere else. If they find a place that people like to go to, then they quickly turn it into everywhere else. So the, everywhere you go, you find the same restaurants, the same takeaway stores. You can buy the same products. It's all the same, you know. They're trying to homogenize everything. And uh, that's something that I very much noticed. And especially in the third world, they're, they're desperately trying to uh, exploit the third world and turn it into the same as everywhere else, you know. But they're about to transfer wealth into the third world. So they've basically exploited the first world as much as they can now. So we're seeing a, a massive amount of economic crisis happen in the first world. We're all you know, experiencing economic hardship in Australia, New Zealand, America, England, everywhere. And they're transferring wealth into the third world because that will disconnect these families in the third world. So the families in the first world are very disconnected now. We're all very superficial. We're all based on... You know, heavily, heavily locked into the economic model. You find the third world families are still um, very connected. The family units are still very connected. So now they introduce iPhones and all the pop culture and the, the iPads and the technology, the computers, and get them all up to speed. And this will disconnect these family units over a period of one or two generations. And then they'll have the whole world disconnected from, from the earth. That's what it's all about. That, that's really what they're trying to do. That's a lot of what tourism seems to be about and everything it's all about. It's just turning everywhere into everywhere else, making it into one big department store. You know, That's what they're trying to do with the planet, really. Bro, do you know what New Zealand's number one earner is? What's that, mate? Tourism. Well, there you go, yeah. Yeah, sounds about right to me, mate. I mean, you know, you have a look around this country and it's like, okay, what happened in one month? Well, we signed up to NATO. We gave the U.S. Coast Guard control of our waters. And uh, also we gave the uh, Reserve Bank a new chairman from the World Bank and gave him sweeping new powers over the economy. That happened in a month. You know, yeah. Like during, a tw during 2012 or, so, or, so, or something like that, I recall. And well, it's, uh, all, it's all based on the economy, though, isn't it? We base the, the value of our countries and the worth of our countries on its economic prowess, you know? It's, it's all economics. You know, we've got to do whatever's good for the economy. Yeah, screw the economy. The economy is fiction. It's digits on the screen. It doesn't mean anything. You know, what's real is the people. What, what's happening to the people in order to balance these books? You know? That's what people don't think about, you know? They all think the, the economic model is, is real. It's, it's pathological thinking. It's a... It's a psychic pathogen that's been superimposed over reality, this economic mindset that we have, you know? Well, I think it's the hierarchical mindset, bro. Basically, like, there's there's certain people with power and certain people without, and that, that I don't know, you're well, all scum and you've got, you got nothing and, 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 and I'm, I'm everything, you know? Just just basically, well, they it, don't care. They just well, this, don't is what, care. This, is what, this is what I refer to as the social pathogen. I say there's three pathogens that, that control society. The economic pathogen... The social pathogen, which is the hierarchical nature of our society and our business structure and everything that you've just gone through. And then the religious pathogen, which tells you that it's all okay. You've got to be discarded. You've got to turn to hell. Redemption, bring, you know, like, um, redemption brings salvation. And it's okay. Once you're all thrown on the trash heap, then Superman's going to come down and save you anyway. So it's all good. You have to let it go onto the trash heap because it says in the book here that it has to turn into a trash heap. So it's pathological thinking. You know, we, we support this economic model in order to climb rungs on the social ladder and, and we get discarded and it's all okay according to the religious model, see. So these three pathogens control our thinking and they control Western society. And they're all programs, you know. Well, I think it's kind of like I remember a diagram in high school where you had the this three tiered cake and on each tier was like the elite, the bankers, the military and then, then all the serfs and peasants down the bottom. I think it might have been describing Russia. 
And then uh, you, you just kind of reminded me of that, and it's like, what was it, the economic, soci- uh, sociological, and religious pathogens. So what this one did is it said, we, uh, what was it, uh, we kill you, no, 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 sorry, the peasants were, we provide for you, the military was, we kill you, and the elite were, we rule you, okay? So uh, you change that up, you turn it into eco, sociological, and, re- and religious one. We extort money from you. We tell you that you're not good enough. And we tell you that it's okay. <laughs> from the economic to the social to the religious. Is that what you're getting at, isn't it? Well, basically, yeah. I mean, yeah, you've got this economic pathogen whereby everything is about money. Everything's about money. You've got people who will come and throw you out of your house because you haven't paid your mortgage. And they feel terrible. I feel terrible. I've got to throw you out of your house. Your family's going to freeze to death. It's the middle of winter. But I have no choice because it says here in this book that the books aren't balanced. You know, you haven't paid your bills. So I'm willing to ex- you know, uh, discard your life, your living flesh, in order to balance these books. This house will sit here empty. No one will be in it. It will just sit there and you'll be freezing to death out here in the cold in order to support this economic model. I feel terrible about it, but I have no choice because it says here that the books aren't balanced. This pathological thinking, right? And if the books are balanced, well, you'll have a bigger front door than me, so therefore you'll be a more important person than me. You'll have more value than me. So I will mollycoddle to you. I will kowtow to you because if the rung falls out from below me, if I'm nice to you, well, maybe you'll give me a helping hand up because you're obviously a better person than me because you have more stuff than me. You know, we judge ourselves by our stuff, which is not us. It's not who we are. And we're allowing other people to be discarded because they have less stuff than us. They're of less value than us, you know. And then, then when they get discarded and thrown in the trash heap, yeah, they say, well, it's okay because according to the Bible, it says that it all has to turn to hell so Jesus can come and save me, you know. So it all makes it all okay, you know. As long as you've got a religion, as long as you've got a religion, it's all good. You have faith. The faith will get you through. It's like you said before, you're a stronger person if you've got faith. No, you just believe that some sugar daddy is going to come down and save you. You're not going to take responsibility for yourself. And you never asked yourself in the beginning, why the hell do you have to pay to be alive in the first place? Maybe what? it's not you're a stronger person. It's you can put up with more crap. Yeah, well, you know, so, but that's, this is the way our society is constructed. And it's, it's pathological thinking. You know, this hierarchical nature, this business structure that we've got, we've got to climb rungs on the, on the business ladder, climb rungs on the social ladder in order to be a better person. That's what it's all about. You value yourself by the stuff that you've collected along the way, and you've usually collected this stuff by exploiting other people and throwing them on the trash heap. You know, so it's, it's completely pathological. This whole society, this whole social structure is pathological. It's yeah. based on pathological thinking. It's based on psych- psychopathy. The whole thing. It's a psychopathic system. Mm. And it's designed to, to, the system gets ever more efficient and it discards more and more of humanity along the way. It's like the system itself, the meme that everybody believes is real. It's like an energetic life form of its own and its food is the energy that we give it through our belief that the system is real. You know? But it's just an idea. You know? Well, they need us in order to continue it. I mean, uh, no machine breaks, uh, no machine keeps running without its fuel source. And um, it's kind of like we're cattle and they're the predators. You know, that's, well, we're that's the fuel source. The fuel source is our energy. That's what they harvest. See, people think, oh, it's our money, it's our wealth. No, it's our energy. There is no, there is no money. Money is the is the catalyst that holds the mechanism together. It's the glue that holds the machine together. But there is no. Wealth. There is no ownership. Ownership's a fraud. You can't own anything. The Earth's been here for billions of years. You're here for fifty or a hundred. You don't own shit. You don't own anything. The Earth owns you. You know. Um, but you can't steal the Earth. Now you trick people into believing they own it. You, you you trick people into believing you can own a piece of the Earth and enslave them to an economic model which is designed to implode and transfer all wealth into the the, the hands of the people who issue them paper. Then they can own the Earth and you'll believe they own it. You know, but you can't own the earth. It's a, it's a fiction. It's a, it's a lie. So it, it's a scam. The whole thing is a scam, Vinny. You know, and it's, it's your energy is what they harvest. You know, the, the the time you spend running on the treadmill, the time you spend collecting this paper in order to pay to be alive, that energy itself that that you're not spending finding yourself or improving reality or experiencing the art of your life, you're doing what they tell you you've got to do in order to pay to be here. That's what they harvest, that energy itself. 
Mm. You put a psychopath on a desert island with nobody to subjugate or worship them, they'll freaking die of starvation, even if they've got plenty of food and water. They will. Absolutely they will. You know, it's an energy harvest that's going on here, you know, and, and that's what people need to, to pay attention to. It's all about energy. The whole universe is, is created from energy. It's all based on energy. This is what we were saying earlier on about what, what's so dangerous about the religions and the churches, the energetic state they're putting people in, all these negative uh, energy that they're generating when they go in and pray in these places because it's all based on negativity. It's all based on the wrong perspective right from the very beginning. So there's it all sorts of stuff going on, mate, but it's an energy harvest. That's the most important thing. And that's why it, it's all about changing your energetic state. That's why when people say if you change the inner world, you can change the outer world. You can. You've got to change your energetic state internally, but then you've got to apply it to the world that you live in. You can't just wander off into a bubble of, of, of spiritual or, or sovereign narcissism, which is what a lot of people do. Think, I'm free now. I'm safe now. Screw the rest of the world. They can all go and do whatever they're doing. No, you can't do that. You've got to pay attention to it because this world is what created the, the need for you to wake up in the first place. It was so negative that it caused you to wake up. Shouldn't you now turn and address that? If you do, with your new energetic state, then you can bring about change. But you've got to apply yourself to it. You can't just, just wander off in a, a little bubble of narcissism. You've got to apply yourself to the world you live in. You know, that's what a lot of people are failing to do. Yeah, and, and it's funny you should mention that because I was just uh, talking on uh, Facebook today saying how I'm a little bit narcissistic and, and what have you, and they're like, oh, but Vinny, you're doing the right thing. And I was like, I know, I know, but this is for future reference. If I ever, like, you know, get too full of myself or get too far ahead of myself or something like that, people will be able to dethrone me because I've given them plenty of ammunition to use against me if I ever do something bad, you know? I'm like Superman giving you a kryptonite bullet just in case I get, get put under mind control, you know what I'm saying? Well, look, we're all flawed, mate. We all make mistakes. Nobody's perfect. There are no gurus. You know, the only guru is you. You're the only person who can educate yourself. You're the only person you can learn from. It was another you know, thing I was saying to myself today, yeah. bro. Well, it's true. There are no, and we're all, nobody's perfect. I mean, I hate it when people put me up on a pedestal. I'm not perfect. I'm as messed up as everybody else. You know, I'm just prepared to speak out. And, oh, my and, God, totally relevant information here. Well, you know, I'm just prepared to speak out. That's, that's all, that's what it's about. And the point is that I'm not anybody special. That's the whole point in what I do, is that you don't have to be somebody special. Why would you even think that there are special somebodies? Because everybody's just somebody the same as you. Everybody's just the same. We're all in this together. There are no gurus. There are no celebrities. There is nobody more special than anybody else. And all I am is someone who's prepared to speak. And that's all I've ever done. And all I've ever had to offer is my perspective. And I don't always get it right because it's just my perspective. I don't claim to be God or a guru or anything. I make mistakes the same as everybody else. So yeah, all I can give you is my perspective. That's the only thing I'm an authority on is me. So that's all I have to offer. That's all anybody has to offer is their perspective. And it's really important that people take that into account when listening to any researcher is to understand that they're offering you their perspective based on the information that they've had access to and what they've done with that information, how they've interpreted that information. So, you know, take, take with, with it what you will. If you find the information you get from these people empowering, something that you can help to improve your own life and improve reality around you, then take it on board by all means. But don't think anybody has got your answers for you because you are the only one who can possibly have those answers, you know. It's, it's an individual thing. Yeah. And uh, also, I found a, uh, an interesting thing. Most truths in life are usually a cruel irony, right? And uh, here's, an, here's another cruel irony of life for you, ladies and gentlemen. Vinny's daily cruel irony. Devoted, loving fans and the people who praise you all the time are the most likely to turn viciously on you for no reason. Have oh, you ever yeah, noticed that, Max? That. Oh, yeah, I've had that. Absolutely. Oh my god, I love you, I agree with everything that you do. I hate you, you're a clone, you know. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had people that have done that, like they've they've sent me an email and I've I've responded to the email and because I've responded, they've suddenly thought oh, this guy's my best friend. And then because I don't respond to every message they send me, suddenly they hate me. And they got an, I get two, three hundred emails a day sometimes. I mean, I, I can't respond to all these emails. But, and this happens, it puts you off responding to any of them because. Yeah, think, totally. Hang, yeah. On, 
hang on, if I respond, suddenly the person may think that I've singled them out as somebody special and now I'm going to have to respond all the time. And sometimes these people will send you 10 or 15 emails in a day and if you don't respond, then you're, you're the, the worst person in the world. I've had, literally had that happen to me, which is very um, strange. It's a strange mentality for people to have, but um, th- this does happen. I, I mean, think it's bit, desperation. I mean, it, it show, well, they're it's alone, desperation. man. They're alone, just like we were. It does, and they want a friend, and they, they're so excited when you do respond to them, and they, they think, wow, I've, I've found a friend. And they listen to the shows and go, well, listen to what he says. I can actually trust this guy. But then they, they, they don't understand it. You, you've got a life, you're doing all this other stuff and it, it takes time and you simply don't have the physical time to sit there and respond to all of these people. And I value all of them. I care about all of them. But I simply can't respond to everybody who writes to me. You know, It's just not possible. You know? Well, I think what uh, Andrew Bartz has did to, um, to this one is he just said, okay, if you want my knowledge and if you want me to uh, 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 do, your, do your readings and everything like that, cough up with the money, okay? You know, other, otherwise I'm not, I'm not going to really bother. And, you know, on the one hand you're like, oh, well, that's a bit, that's a bit uh, capitalistic of you. And on the other hand you're like, you know, too frickin' right. If you're going to give your time to other people and uh, you don't have to do it and it's actually stressful and painful for you sometimes and actually does take a lot out of you, why shouldn't you get some kind of compensation? Well, I don't know. I, mean, I don't, I don't sell anything. I'm not recommending that you or I do that because we're not exactly that kind of – we're not that kind of person. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I'm not selling anything from the site. But, I mean, it just is – it is disappointing sometimes when, when – you know, I mean, I, I can't respond. I, I, I love everybody's emails that they send me, but I, I simply can't respond to all of them. And if, if I do respond, I mean, I, I love all of you. I love everybody. I don't know how to hate people. I don't know anybody that I actually have a problem with, you know. I get angry with people. Sure, I do. But you know, I don't, I don't hold grudges, and I don't hate people. So, um, but you know, it's just, it's just unnerving. So it, it does put you off responding to people. But I do try to respond to to some of them. I mean, some of them really um, do tug at the heartstrings, and I really do want to write to people. But it, it does get difficult. Well, I think that's the whole point about moral obligation and having a conscience and, and whatnot, is you can't just sit back and ignore everything and everybody when you are, in fact, digesting some of this content, when you are aware that a lot of the stuff that's happening to people out there is very real and that they get locked up in psych wards for it or they get tortured, etc., by police. You know, these, these are the kind of real things that we have to emotionally deal with, but... I don't know about you, but I feel a sort of a moral obligation, maybe even just a little bit of guilt there, if I don't help or listen to uh, those people because it's too painful for me to listen to because I've heard too much of it. Well, yeah, I mean, I try to respond on the shows as well to a lot of them, you know. But, I mean, in the shows as well, I mean, I, I hope I'm not providing any information that kind of freaks people out. I've, I've tried to present all of it in, in perspective of opportunity. And there's a reason you need to have this information and there is an opportunity that it provides for you. That's what I've really tried to do with the shows. I I think there's enough people out there bringing all the negative stuff to people already and that that, what you you just described is what happens to people. They find out about this stuff and they begin to free fall. And I've tried to provide a safety net. That's a lot of what I've tried to do with Surviving the Matrix right from the beginning. That's a lot of the reason why I even accepted the, the offer to do this show because I thought people need a safety net. They need to understand that all is not lost. You know, this isn't you know, the, the, the worst time in history. It's, it's actually one of the best times in history. It's actually one of the greatest opportunities we've ever had for freedom because it's the first time in history when the, the workings of the mechanism have been laid so bare for all to see. And we do have the strength of numbers to actually pull off some pretty some pretty good change if we apply ourselves to the situation. So long uh, as each of that number realises their own part to play in this grand scheme. Yeah, yeah, and that, that, that comes through realising their own power. So that's why I've, I've concentrated on that so much through the shows. And that's what I've tried to do, though, is, is provide a safety net. So hopefully that's not what I do. Hopefully people don't um, go into fear and, and, you know, I mean, a lot of the stuff I get, a lot of the mail I get are from people who, who tell me that they've, it's changed their lives, the information has changed their lives. And because it's changed their lives, it's also changed the lives of their children. And things are so much better for them now. They understand themselves now. They understand how to deal with the system now. They don't feel disempowered anymore. 
they, they feel like they're on the front line now and they're stepping up and they realise that there is a growing wave of consciousness. I get a, really a lot of positive emails like that of, of people that are applying themselves to, to their situations in their own communities. And it, it's a great thing to, to see. It makes it all worthwhile. It really does. I don't get a lot of peop- uh, emails from people who are just feeling disempowered. Um, sometimes I get people going, saying, oh, I've got a court case, I need some support, can you give me some moral support? And I try to do that. But um, most of the emails, the most, the majority of emails I get are very, very positive from people. Well, it is. And for, for every one person who's going totally nuts and being really nasty sort of thing, there's, there's 10 people who do the exact opposite. And it makes it does kind of, I don't know, for some reason, it, you remember the worst ones. You, you well, know, you do, you do. They have they they affect you more. You think, what am I doing wrong? Why does this person hate me? I mean, I get a certain amount of hate mail from people who just spread disinformation about me as well. I, mean, I get that. They kind of know you're making a difference when people spread disinformation and, and start point, claiming you're a government agent or whatever. You know, so that's that's an interesting. Uh, I, I, think Jordan, think. I think Jordan Maxwell could totally relate to that, bro. <laughs> oh, mate, it's, you think, what, what would the, the government possibly have to gain by me saying some of the things I've said? If you listen to the shows that I say, I mean, the shows that I've done, people write to me and say, I don't know how you get away with saying what you do. Well, they haven't put you in jail already, you know. It's because they're not all powerful, bro. <laughs> no, they're not. They're not as powerful as everyone thinks they are. They just like people to think that they're all powerful, you know, but it's a meme. It's just an idea. Yeah, everyone thinks the Illuminati is this all powerful organization and they, they got everything covered. Well, if you think that, then they have. You're not going to do anything, are you? You know, I don't think they do at all. I don't think they control shit. They don't control me, that's for sure. Mm, mm. Right? So I'll do what I want to do and I'll say what I want to say. So, um, but people, yeah, they put out disinformation, say I'm this and I'm that. And, you know, they say, oh, he's running a PSYOP. Oh, really? Well, what is it? What's the PSYOP I'm running? Oh, they, they won't. They won't tell you what that is. Have you ever been accused of being replaced by a clone? <laughs> oh no, I haven't. It never been the first time today, bro. Oh yeah, that, there's I've, a new I've one. Been accused, <laughs> I've been accused of uh, wearing a prosthetic face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it just it gets better and better, doesn't it? You know? Oh my God! You know, like some what of you, that? some of you people that abuse us, I is don't that, think you realise that you are actually one of our prime sources of amusement as well. Yeah, that's a classic. What is that? A prosthetic <laughs> face? Isn't that a mask? <laughs> He's wearing a prosthetic face. <laughs> 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 oh my god! Oh my god! That's a new one on me, and, and of course, it's it's currently on you, on your face. Yeah, that's <laughs> a classic, mate. You, you couldn't make this shit up, you know. <laughs> you, just, you, you just can't. You just can't. Uh, 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 I feel better all of a sudden. I feel much better. <laughs> Thank you very much for listening, ladies and gentlemen, to Vinnie Eastwood, Max Egan, and the ghost of Jordan Maxwell. Again, by the way, Jordan is in deep. Uh, trouble um mostly just basically all his belongings computer program uh, all his books all his clothes his computers microphones comrex box the whole the whole deal it burned to the ground this morning so if you want to give him a hand please go to jordan maxwell show.com not jordan maxwell.com i want to remind you specifically jordan maxwell show.com not jordanmaxwell.com because that's apparently run by a bunch of scumbags who tried to copyright his name and steal all his content and are currently collecting money in his name as well and not giving him any. You know how much that hurts, ladies and gentlemen? If you're 74 years old and all your work come to, comes to that and then everything that was left just burnt to the ground, help the man out. Please. I can't. I can help him out by asking for him on his behalf, but I... I I need your help as well, ladies and gentlemen. You know, donations and subscriptions are what I live off. I I need help and support every day just to keep helping and supporting other people. You know, I can't pay you back. I can pay it forward, though. That's about right. Thank you very much, Max. Thank you very much to the ghost of Jordan Maxwell. And we will see you again sometime, ladies and gentlemen, soon enough. No matter where you live, globalism affects you. Did you know that the Vinnie Eastwood Show has more subscribers than New Zealand Herald TV and is New Zealand's most popular YouTube news channel? We're warm-hearted humour 
and a list of awesome guests talk about crucial issues which the mainstream media ignore. A show where you, the listener, can phone up with questions, comments and suggestions of guests. Vinny is building a hub to connect truthers with raw information they need to become active. He can help you gain further skills such as website building, producing audio and video and creating revenue streams in your own multimedia environment. Because Vinny supports such a wide range of people in the truth movement, he is not government or corporate backed and relies entirely on your donations. Give now, give generously or subscribe for $10 a month for access to ad-free video archives. Just visit the VinnieEastwoodShow.com and click donate. Do you realize every day we are being put under constant stress from wireless radiation? What's worse is that you don't even know that it's happening. It puts as much stress on our body as if we had a constant viral infection, draining our energy and sapping our strength, or just making us irritable and fatigued. These wireless fields are being emitted from computers, microwaves, mobile phones, power lines, and any electrical appliance. Now there is a solution. A group of research engineers in New Zealand have come up with an active shielding device that shields you from wireless radiation at a cellular level. Blue Shield comes in three models, a household, portable and USB that plugs into any computer. The great thing about Blue Shield is it is very affordable and guaranteed to last. A one-off purchase will see you being protected for years to come. Visit AmericanFreedomRadio.com and click on the Blue Shield banner. Blue Shield, brought to you by the VinnieEastwoodShow.com if you take an active interest in maintaining the optimum health and well-being of yourself and your family, the New Zealand Journal of Natural Medicine is the magazine you've been waiting for. Having taken Australia and New Zealand by storm, the New Zealand Journal of Natural Medicine is now available in the UK and Europe. Visit www.nznaturalmed.co.uk or call 01626 337-531 to order your copy now. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to yet another exciting episode of the Vinnie Eastwood Show. This one's a very exciting episode, mind you. Because we have, I don't know, me and my mate, uh, Mikhail, were really, uh, really getting into our music one night. Uh, that's a, a euphemism for something. And we thought about, you know, what would be the, like, the coolest interview. You know, something that I haven't done before. Something nobody hadn't been done. And I had these two listeners, maybe even more actually, telling me that I needed to get Max Egan back on. And another couple of listeners who listened to my Jordan Maxwell interview for a, a while back, and they saying, we need to get Jordan on. And I thought, and I was like, boom, it came into my head. You get Jordan Maxwell and Max Egan on the Vinnie Eastwood show for two hours, bro. That sounded really choice. We were like, oh my God, I can't wait to listen to that. And now you get to listen to it. We have Jordan Maxwell and Max Egan. On the Vinnie Eastwood Show. Jordan Maxwell's website is jordanmaxwellshow.com, not to be confused with jordanmaxwell.com, and uh, Max Egan's show is thecrowhouse.com. Welcome, gentlemen. Well, thank you for having me on again. Also, um, Jordan has a bad connection. Uh, this is mostly because all of his equipment, research materials, clothing, etc., his life's work. All his belongings burnt to the ground this morning. And there is a uh, short video on the YouTube channel, Horrific Nature of Psychopathy. I think really kind of uh, uh, spells this out to a large degree. Because, after all, psychopaths crave power and control. There's a couple of institutions that ha have a lot of power and control that basically influence society to a large extent. And religion is certainly one of them. Well, yeah, absolutely. You know, the relig but you know, there's a lot of stuff that goes on with religion. I mean, a lot of the uh, the psychopaths hide there, 
And there's there's a lot of you know really really insidious stuff that, that goes on in churches and in convents and you know, these very very negative places. But I mean, just look at the the, the fruit that religion has borne. Really, if you look at the world. You look at the world in the last few hundred years, I mean, so many wars have been fought in the name of religion. So many people have died in the name of religion. All these religions essentially preach love and peace, uh, but they all preach um, religious superiority as well. You know, love, love the guys from the other faith. Don't judge them badly, but understand that if you belong to this faith, then only you are going to go to heaven, so only you are special. Even though we, we, we can't judge these people bad, you're special. So it's all, it's all based on supremacism, I and mean, every religion does this. And, you know, they're, they're taught to, you know, eye for an eye, all this, this violent stuff, let's go and force ourselves on other people. It, it's, all, it's all ridiculous. And all the redeemer complex that goes with Christianity as well, I mean, it's okay for you to go and kill the others because you're just doing God's will, and Jesus died for your sins anyway, so it's okay. Yeah. So Bill Hicks criticized Christianity one time uh, in a small southern town, couple of guys came up to him and said hey buddy come here we're christians we didn't like what you said he said then forgive me that we're standing in the rain and you call that reality in because reality will mirror back to you the emotional state that you're in and churches and religion are designed to put you in a negative emotional state and get you praying for self-preservation essentially and and doing negative affirmations the whole time you're there so they're very very insidious places mm. I think that anybody who asks other people to believe what they're saying on their word and doesn't encourage them to research further into what they're telling them and doesn't encourage them to question them uh, is inherently corrupt or corruptible at the very least. Well, yeah, of course, of course. I mean, everything should be uh, you know, open to your own interpretation. You need to investigate everything everybody says. I even say that with my shows. Don't believe me. Go and investigate for yourself. All I'm offering you is my perspective. And that's what religion's done. It's offered you their perspective. But it's put the, the fear of God into you so that if you don't take my perspective on as reality, then you're going to go and burn in hell. It puts you in this state of fear. You know, it's mind control. The whole thing's about mind control. And it's, it's very disempowering. It's designed to shift you away from your own spiritual power and, and cause you to place that power in an external being. And it's it's all it's all a fiction. It's all an illusion. It's very very negative. Well, stuff. they do the opposite of the sales pitch, Max. And in a lot of cases, they say we bring you love, we bring you peace, we bring you contentment. And then, once you become an employee of the church, we bring you small boys and we charge large amounts of money for them. Yeah, well, that's another side to it, isn't it? You know, that's that's the inner circle. No pun intended. And the, the the Islamic people, the Christians, and the more people are praying around the world to their God, the worse our world is becoming day by day. The more corrupt, the more evil. <clears throat> so there's no doubt in my mind that um, religion is the problem. Uh, what he said, ladies and gentlemen, is it robs you of your spirituality and you don't need something external in order to guide your spirituality. You have that guiding light within you. Is that more or less it? That's it. Mm -hmm. And Max, you, you also had a comment to make about this too, didn't you? Well, that's exactly what it does. I mean, religion has hijacked spirituality and it's turned it into something very negative. And even when you look at what happens in the situation of a church, it's actually a very negative ritual that's going on in a church. You've got people that are going there because they're in a state of fear for a start. They're in, in a state, you know, they're, they're scared that they're going to go to hell if they don't go to pray to this God. Um, they go to a building and they, they are in a state of fear and they're, they're praying for their own self-preservation and they're doing what what is essentially negative affirmations they're praying for peace and they're praying for love so essentially they're acknowledging that there is no peace and there is no love and they're doing it in a building designed to channel energy and they're doing it in a state of fear so the whole thing is negative right from the very very um onset now you look at a a, a traditional prayer the way a, a native american or a, a a shaman would pray they would put themselves in the energetic state where their prayer had already been answered if you wanted peace in the world, you would put yourself in a state where you are feeling the peace in the world. 
you are feeling the love in the world. If you want it rained, you're going to put yourself in the energetic state. Well, the uh, VinnieEastwoodShow.com has a link to the YouTube page where you can uh, uh, hear uh, Jordan talk about that and explain uh, what we need uh, from you, uh, the listeners, as well. And, and namesake, um, probably around about five grand to just get him back on his feet in terms of being able to record uh, shows again with a, a little computer. He's got people that have good you know, connections and whatnot that can get it all cheapy, cheapy. So go to jordanmaxwellshow.com and donate today. And also we'd like to introduce uh, Max Egan. Hey, Vinny. Thanks for having me on again, brother. Nice yeah. to be on with Jordan. Yeah, it is. It is. Now, um, prefacing this conversation, uh, I was talking to uh, Jordan before the show. Um, he's been threatened recently. So he's got, he's got, he's, you've got it coming at you from all angles, don't you, mate? He's been threatened recently okay. not to talk about government conspiracy. So we're not going to talk about that today. Um, in fact, we've done shockingly large amounts of content. Jordan's been doing it for 54 years. I'm tired of it. Max, are you, t- are you a little bit tired of it? Do you know to a degree? To a degree. I mean, it's still going on. But, yeah, it, it, does, become, it does become tiresome. It becomes kind of tedious, right? So, let, let, <laughs> you know, talking about your own enslavement and extermination, you know, I was like, oh, 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 getting bored now. No. <laughs> but, uh-huh. but, yeah, we want to talk about spirituality. And uh, as we are saying just, just off air before, I um, had an interview just before today saying that uh, spirituality and religion are mutually exclusive. Jordan, I'd like to hear your thoughts on that. Absolutely. There's no doubt that uh, the, it's been proven now around the world that um, the world is filled with religions. People are praying to their gods, all the different gods of the Jews, 